Hello and welcome to Markplex tutorial 193 and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at activity bars and uh, I haven't done this for a while in fact uh, the last one was tutorial 133 so I thought it'd be something that would be worth revisiting. Now if you're not familiar with activity bars then uh, what I've done is included a link to a TradeStation video on the web page and you can go and familiarize yourself with them and with the standard TradeStation activity bar studies that come with TradeStation. So what we're going to be doing today is creating a activity bar study that looks for zero rejection CCI or CCI zero rejections. That is when the CCI comes very near or slightly crosses the zero line and then retracts. That would be a zero rejection. And we're also going to be looking at CCI price divergence. And we're doing that using the lower time frame. So with activity bars, what we have just as by way of example, in this case, our bar data one is daily. But if we go to our study, double click on it, the various uh, items in this list, if we go to data settings, you'll see that we can set our intraday data and we can also set the number of days back. And what we can then do in the program is analyze that minute data, but display the boxes on the chart and very briefly these boxes are, are numbered and uh, the numbers rotate around a loop or rather I say numbered numbered and letters depending on a, a string that we'll be looking at in the program and uh, each time slot has a letter in our case if there is a zero rejection or a divergence that time slot is validated and we're going to draw a little box on the chart. Anyway, hopefully that will make more sense as we get into the program. Let's do just that. And uh, here we have it. And I've added some notes to the program, which hopefully you will find useful. But let's get into the program. We've got two methods. The first one is uh, legacy color from color objects. And what I'm doing there is I'm putting in the name of a string. I'm doing color slightly differently from the standard trade station activity bar studies. Uh, what I'm using are some of the, the names of the uh, trade station color class. So we, we need some way of changing, converting the name into a integer, which represents the, the RGB color. And then that we can use as an input to draw the activity bar boxes. So that's one method. The other one is uh, gonna be run. Now this will be, this is applied to the chart, which as I've already said, has got daily bars, but because this is an activity bar study, this is going to be running on the underlying data, which we've got set as the minute bars. So we've got various things happening in this method here, which runs on the, the finer grained data, which is the activity bar data, which is the one minute data. So first of all, uh, we've got functionality to let us know when we've got a new daily bar or a new activity bar. And um, the things that we need to do there is increment a couple of counters. One of the counters is going to be used to determine which label we use in our list. So that we're just going to go looping around those. The other one is going to be useful to know which color and we're going to be putting our colors in a token list in an instant. So the label is selected using this formulation here label equals mid string the label list which is the uh, the list you can see up here a b c d etc the value of that we're going to be getting using one of those counters so you'll see the next label index is the counter we're going to be getting one item and it is the next label into index which is incremented here and when it reaches a certain point then it goes back to one the next thing we do is calculate the CCI, just using CCI. Now I've used here a variety, I've used uh, CCI, the length, which is user input of data 51. We've also used the formulation or the, uh, the syntax of activity data. So we can actually use either of those, but I've used data 51 here. Then having done that, we calculate some pivots, pivot for the price, 
that is the activity bar data price, so high and low. And then similarly for the CCI, looking for lows, looking for highs. One of the things we need to do when we're doing activity bar studies is set the row height. And we can do that using this formulation here. And if you're not sure about this, one thing you can also do is go to the standard activity bar studies and modify those or look at the syntax that they've used. But we need to do this to decide how big those little boxes are going to be. And then we go into finding whether a divergence has occurred using syntax, which is probably familiar to anybody who's looked at some of these other Markplex videos. If there is a divergence, then we add a cell, we add an activity bar cell. We use that, we do that doing that using this syntax. If you're not familiar with that, if you right click and you look at the help file, we've got the highest price level, the lowest price level of that little uh, value. In fact, um, we're using the high of the activity bar. In other words, the smaller time frame. Decide which side you, you want it to be on and then the cell group label, the cell group color and cell group value, which we're not really going to be using. So we've got high of activity data, low of activity data. We're putting this one on the right side. The label is the thing that we've previously calculated going through that loop. And then the color, we're doing this legacy color from color obj, which is the method I just showed you. The way that we do that is we go to our token list and we put in this value next call, which I don't think I've spoken about. So we'll look at that in an instant. And it's a similar uh, syntax when we add the, uh, the high pivot uh, divergence, and then finally the zero rejections. And I'm just saying the CCI two bars ago has got to be greater than a user input upper, and the CCI has got to be greater than a user input upper, but the CCI one bar ago has got to be less than this user input zero U, but greater than this user input zero L. So that means that if we just go back to the inputs, you'll see that we've got those set. So when I say around the zero mark, what I've said, it's got to go below 10, but above zero, that could be minus 10 if you wanted it to be able to slightly break the zero line. And then the upper, the, uh, the bars or the, the values of the CCI on either side have got to be greater than 50 for this input. So again, if that occurs, we can then add a cell to the activity bar chart. And similarly, if we have the, uh, the zero rejection happening, the other way around. Now I mentioned the, the token list. We create the to token list here. It's called col TL. And what I've done, I've just listed a variety of colors that I chose as being potentially easy to see on the background. Nothing too complicated there. And we can put that straight into a token list. And the other thing that I mentioned was the next call value. And so what we've done is each time we increment next call by one. But if we say if it's greater than the count of the token list minus one, then we reset it to zero and then we keep go around incrementing it again. The only other thing which is slightly different is what I've said is if we get the divergences first, what I've done is incremented that next call value, which ensures that then if we get a divergence and a zero rejection, then we wouldn't get the situation where they were both given the same color. And then finally, we set uh, there's some syntax here, which is just used to help us determine if uh, it's a new bar or a new activity bar. Uh, or in fact, in this case, just if it's a new bar, a new data one bar, and then we call the new bar method, which is the method that we've just been through. Let's go back to the chart again. And I've not thought too much about the anal analytic um, possibilities of this, but um, really it's something it just means that you can apply information on a larger time frame that uses data from a uh, finer time frame, a small, a shorter bar line, which could potentially be useful. And I use the CCI, you might have uh, other applications. Anyway, hopefully you will find this useful. I have made the code available at uh, zero additional cost 
to Goldpass members. Thank you very much. Thank you.